All right, we're back. It's February garden tour. I'm going to show you lots of little changes, updates, uh, adjustments. I'm going to show you the seed station first. All right, so here in the garage at the seed station, I have upgraded to have more lights. So I started with this one light, this one shop light from Walmart. And firstly, I have made it closer because I noticed that um, some of the seedlings were like stretching at an angle towards the light. And that means that one, the light is not bright enough and two, it's too far away. So I lowered the light and um, have seen less of that um, behavior from the seedlings. And I got these much brighter LEDs that fit this space perfectly. I found these on Amazon. It was a four pack. Um, it was perfect for uh, my rack here. And I got a lot of little experiments going on in here. I am um, experimenting with growing cacao. I got a uh, cacao pod and we'll see what I learned from this and if it goes anywhere. I would be very excited to have a cacao tree. I am also working on a lot of uh, flowers for pollinators in the garden. And I still got the, uh, the apple seedlings going strong. I uh, got some heirloom tomatoes going here. And these little guys are the uh, yellow dragon fruit finally popping up. So that's all really cool. And this one, this one is a pomegranate. Down here, we got more flowers, and a lot of these haven't popped up yet. I started using a bottom watering in these trays so that they have a more consistent um, water. I won't come out here and have these be bone dry and half of them falling over and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what I got going on out here. I'll show you the garden next. So out here in the garden, let me start right here. The blueberries are getting bigger. I think they're gonna be exploding soon as we go into spring. Not much activity yet on the goji berries. They have a really short season, so I'm not sure that I'm going to get much of a crop from these. And the raspberries, they are barely doing anything. But I think they'll be doing more soon. Right here, I moved my little greenhouse setup um, for the tropical plants that I felt were the most um, susceptible to the cold. I've got my banana in here and my coffee plant, coffee tree. And then I put the curry in here. It didn't um, seem like it was struggling, but I did it just in case, and it's doing just fine in there. And this is just to keep it um, at a consistent temperature uh, through the winter because we've had nights where it's been uh, mid-40s. And that's a little too cold for some of these. So I've got a uh, thermometer in here to help monitor the temperature. It's 78 in here right now, so that's perfect. Over here we got the blackberries. They're finally getting some more significant growth. And I... One thing I'm focusing on um, this season is really optimizing where things are located um, throughout the garden. I have moved uh, all the strawberries from where they were over here 
so that they get more consistent sun throughout the day. And I now have, I believe it's seven varieties of strawberries. I am bound and determined to get strawberries this year. We've been uh, trying to grow them and have had some success, but not as much as I would like for quite a while. It's one of the things we have been growing since we started gardening here. Um, and I got over here the potatoes, these potato buckets. Uh, they are coming in right here. And this is just with um, some store-bought potatoes. So it can easily be done. And this one I'm excited about. This is a new addition to the garden. This is a gooseberry. Um, and a little historical trivia for you. In some parts of the United States, um, gooseberries and uh, currants used to be illegal um, because early in the 20th century and I think prior... Um, there was a lot of deforestation happening in the United States and at some point they wanted to do reforestation and so they imported a lot of trees from Europe and the trees that they imported, these pines, were susceptible to a certain fungus and it turns out that um, plants such as gooseberries and currants were carriers for the fungus. So these plants got banned <laughs> so that the pines wouldn't uh, get infected by them. And it, not until like 70 some odd years later are they unbanned in some of these states that had them banned. And that's, that's just a really interesting piece of history for you. And, oh, excited about this one. We got a Granny Smith apple at last. Just got this the other day, so it is just a big stick right now. But we're hoping for some real growth through the season. And another one I just got is this macadamia nut tree. And they get rather huge, so it can't uh, live in this small pot forever. So I'll be uh, putting it in a bigger pot at some point. So I'll show you how the dragon fruit are doing. So the dragon fruit are about the same as they were last month. It's just starting to warm up. So now is the time when we'll really start to see some activity on these. See this little, same little nub from last month. And here's the others. I think this guy got a little bit taller. But last year, uh, through the summer, um, the first dragon fruit that I got was just going gangbusters, and I had to take all those cuttings from it, so I fully expect that these are going to do the same. And then over here I can show you some of the new growth on another tree that I got a while back. This is the almond. You might remember Last time it was just a little twig, twig sticking out of this pot, and now, now look at it. It's got all these leaves and new growth. It's ready to go. It's going to go nuts this year. And speaking of trees, I picked up, uh, at the same time as the gooseberry and the macadamia, I got a uh, pecan. I was attempting to grow these from seed and didn't have success. 
so I picked up one of these, and they are um, they are in some ways similar to avocados and other plants that require a partner. Um, so I've got one now, and I'm going to need to get a, a pollination partner for it at some point. And then I'm going to have to repot these guys at some point. This is the, uh, the, the loquat right there. The ice cream bean behind it. They're still small. I can show you how the, uh, the cuttings, I did a video on this that's going to be going up soon. Uh, the cuttings of the white mulberry and fig are starting to come to life. Not a lot of activity on the figs, but you can see little tiny buds there. So I'll show you where the strawberries used to be. This was my strawberry patch. Um, so now I'm thinking about what can go in here to fill this spot. It doesn't get as much sun as I thought, which is part of the reason um, I ended up taking the strawberries out of here. It's getting sun right now a bit, but it's going to be in shadow for the second half of the day pretty soon. So, so whatever I select to put in here will need to be something that can do with a little bit of shade. And over here I can show you we finally have more things growing up this arch. We've got these peas here. And then even more impressive is right here. It's growing all the way up and over. We got a bunch of them coming in. And then this guy right here. And then this one over here. And I'm going to have to coax it to come back down to the uh, to the arch itself otherwise it'll get too tall and just sway and snap off and then right down here our Haas avocado has come back to life look at all these new leaves shiny new leaves soon this is going to be the going into spring the time of year when they'll be blooming so at some point I'll come out here and there'll be all these little flowers and I did repot um, the sprout that I had because it's just keep it on keep it on So maybe next month this will be like up to here or so, we can hope. <laughs> and then the Zuptano avocado hasn't re-emerged yet. It still looks kind of sorry, but it's got signs of coming back. Got the little leaves coming in and right there. Over here, my pepper patch is kind of uh, dormant um, in a lot of places. What you'll do is um, kind of cut them back for winter. I did not do that. I kind of just let them do what they were going to do. Um, and recently came out here and uh, did give them a bit of a haircut just because they look kind of gross. But um, now that we're going into the warmer season, they're gonna 
go nuts like everything else and come back to life. And then right here, I so one of the things I've been experimenting with is just perennializing everything. For instance, the peppers. Um, some of the conventional wisdom is that like peppers are a single season crop, but you can perennialize them fairly easily in a lot of areas and just uh, keep growing with the same plant year over year. You don't have to necessarily start a new plant. And that brings me to my tomatoes here. I'm doing something similar. I need to give these a haircut as well, but um, I've overwintered these tomatoes and have had tomatoes through the winter so I don't feel the need to start a new new plants necessarily um, if I'm effectively able to overwinter them here in California we don't have um, like a true winter like many other parts of the United States we really just have um, like a warm season and then a shoulder season is what it's referred to. So it's just less warm and we do get a bit of cold but not really a true frost. Um, so here <laughs> I got some dandelions. So this is um, and I'm sure some people will like be horrified when I say this. I and others will be like, yeah, heck yeah. So I wanted to get dandelions because they are not necessarily a weed. They are an herb and they're also a really good flower for pollinators. And I figured why why buy seeds for them when I've can s clearly see them growing in the front yard. So what I did was I transplanted the taproot of dandelions from the front yard where they're growing as a weed into multiple places in the backyard. And this is one of them. I've just dispersed them um, and planted them throughout the backyard. Um, not necessarily knowing which spot would be best for them, just as an experiment. So, and what I'm hoping is that when they um, go to seed, the seeds will scatter and end up taking where they are best suited to grow throughout the backyard. So that's my hope. Um, this spot is just kind of a random spot that I selected, but uh, that was my cheap way of acquiring dandelions in the garden for uh, for uses as an herb and uh, foraging spots for uh, pollinators, attracting pollinators. And then right over here... I unfortunately came out here and found that the zucchini I planted had all died off. I think I just wasn't consistent enough with my watering. I kind of neglected this bed and kind of was hoping that it would get hit by the sprinklers. And this spot really doesn't get hit much. So they, uh, they didn't make it. Um, but learning experience. So here is a new addition to this spot. Is a uh, squash. I haven't grown squash before, so that'll be fun. And I want to get some more zucchini back in here and uh, be more consistent with my watering. I heard a rustling over here. Got little lizard friends. See if I can get eyes on him. Nope. 
he's gone. Anyway, that's the garden. I'm sure that I glossed over plenty of stuff because I've got so much going on back here, but those are the main things that sprang to mind in terms of changes. Are you down there? Oh my god. Oh, he's a big guy. There he goes. There he goes. He's gone. <laughs> anyway, that's the garden. <laughs> oh, they're everywhere. I love it.